Joining me now is National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Jake, thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon. I know how busy and heartbreaking the last week has been uh, in the White House. I just want to start with the timeline here. We're still all bracing for a full-scale ground offensive. We're, we're waiting for updates from the Israelis. What is your expectation in the White House right now? Is it hours? Is it days? Could, could it even be farther away from that than that? Well, first, thanks for having me on. Uh, to your question, I'll let the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, uh, make any announcements or statements they want to make with respect to the next phase of their military operation. I won't characterize it from here. But we are, of course, in daily, hourly contact with our Israeli counterparts uh, to learn more. Uh, but it's not my place to share that publicly. There are still more than 150 hostages held by Hamas, uh, some of them Americans. How concerned are you about their safety once a ground offensive launches? We are concerned. We're concerned about their safety even now uh, because they're in the hands of brutal and vicious terrorists. And we are doing everything in our power to secure the release of the American hostages, of all the hostages. President Biden has sent hostage experts to coordinate with their Israeli counterparts on recovery efforts. We're working through third countries on potential avenues for their release. And I need to be cautious about how much more I say in that regard, because uh, we are pursuing a number of different pathways. But you'll understand that uh, we need to keep those discreet in hopes that we actually can achieve the safe release of Americans and others, but the president has no higher priority than to make this happen. There, there's always so much work going on behind the scenes, even when there's not updates being given. Your, your counterpart, your Israeli counterpart, did say this week that there will be no negotiations over hostages. It, I know Secretary Blinken is out talking to countries that talk to Hamas, but if Israel says the channel is closed, could there still be a negotiation, a diplomatic path? Look, like I said, uh, we, I have to be cautious about how I discuss our conversations <clears throat> both with Israel and with third countries with respect to avenues to secure the release of hostages. Uh, and I'm not going to characterize Israel's position or how it, it will proceed. I will only say this. We are leaving no stone unturned in trying to figure out a way to get the Americans and all of the other hostages back safely. We're not going to rest until... Uh, you know, we have taken every conceivable effort to make that happen. And if we have anything further to update you on, we will, of course, do so. In the meantime, we're going to keep our heads down and keep working at it. The, the president spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday. He's obviously been in very regular contact with him. There were reports this morning in The New York Times that Israel has a specific plan to take Gaza City and destroy Hamas leaders. What is your understanding of what their ultimate goal or end goal is uh, when they're, as they're moving forward with this ground offensive? Their goal is a safe and secure democratic and Jewish state of Israel that is not subject to constant, brutal, vicious terrorist attack from the south and or the north or the west or anywhere else. Uh, more immediately, it is to try to uh, eliminate the terrorist infrastructure of Hamas and to take out the leaders of Hamas so that they no longer represent a threat to Israel or to the Jewish people. Now, there are then more immediate operational objectives that go into the military planning for how to get there. But fundamentally, the goal is to eliminate the, the threat that Hamas poses to the state of Israel, and they are undertaking a military campaign to make that happen. Hamas, of course, would not exist without Iran. Um, do you think that they can be defeated militarily by a military um, offensive into Gaza? You're right. Uh, Iran, as we have said from the beginning, is broadly complicit in these attacks because for years it has funded, trained, supported Hamas and uh, has, as recently as yesterday, gone out publicly having met with Hamas's leaders and praised what they have done, this, this horrific, barbaric set of attacks that uh, went after women and children, even babies. Uh, and, and this is absolutely unconscionable uh, for any nation uh, to take a stand on behalf of this kind of slaughter. Uh, we believe that Israel can be successful in uh, dealing uh, a devastating blow to Hamas. 
Uh, they are working on that now as we speak, and we are supporting them in that effort because Israel has not just a right to defend itself against this kind of terrorism, but as the president said, a duty to defend itself against this kind of terrorism. Uh, as you know, uh, the United Nations has said, and other health organizations have said, that the evacuation that Israel has called for from northern Gaza is basically impossible, that it uh, would, would uh, pose a significant humanitarian risk. So the other issue, of course, as you know very well, is the fear of people there, many of whom are refugees themselves from past wars, won't be able to return. Are there any assurances the United States has asked for from Israel that they'll be able to return to northern Gaza after the offensive? Well, we are in daily, indeed, as I said before, hourly contact with the Israelis, with the United Nations, with the Egyptians, with the Jordanians, on ensuring that there are safe places for civilians to go, and when they go there, that they have access to the basic needs they have of food, of water, of medicine, of shelter. And we are going to keep working actively, aggressively on that. Secretary Blinken has been in the region. He's in Egypt today uh, working on this issue. Uh, as well as consulting on uh, a range of other matters, too. Um, when it comes to the question of uh, people actually leaving Gaza as opposed to going to safe places in Gaza, we have an active conversation happening with regional partners. We have an active conversation happening with the Israelis. We're not at the point yet for seeking particular assurances of one kind or another. What I will say is that, ultimately, we need safe places for people to go, and then, of course, civilians in Gaza deserve the right uh, to return to their homes. So that's not a question for us, but uh, the conversation is still in the stage of working out uh, where a safe area can be established and how we can ensure that that safe area is fully stocked with the necessary humanitarian supplies. Secretary Blinken is on his way to Egypt, probably in Egypt at this point. Yesterday, we saw reports that the Rafah crossing was not open, even though there was an expectation it would be. Is there leverage, such as military aid or assistance, the United States would be willing to use in order to get that crossing open? The U.S. is going to work around the clock until American citizens who live in Gaza are able to leave Gaza, are able to get safe passage out through that border crossing from Gaza into Egypt. And uh, I don't think we've reached the point where, uh, you know, we have to make threats of the kind I think you're implying. We are going to continue to work it, uh, and, and we have a collaborative uh, uh, conversation going with the Israelis and with the Egyptians, and now it's a matter of just being able to execute a game plan to actually move the American citizens across that border. There has been, uh, the president has repeated many times, as have you, as have other national security officials, that the U.S. is going to offer any support Israel needs um, in terms of assistance, military equipment. I, I know you've said no troops on the ground. Is it possible that U.S. forces could be involved in training in any capacity, or is that something that remains on the table as a possibility? Well, the ground offensive and the aerial campaign and the other steps that the Israelis have been discussing, both publicly and privately, that involves Israeli forces, not American forces. And we don't expect that to change uh, as they continue to go after the Hamas terrorist infrastructure. And the United States, the form of support that we are providing is to get them the capabilities they need, including uh, ammunition as well as um, interceptors for their Iron Dome system so that they can continue to protect their cities against Hamas rocket attacks falling down on civilian areas. So that is where our support is focused at this time. I can't speak to every conceivable hypothetical, but I will say uh, that the Israeli operation currently being contemplated is just that, uh, an operation being conducted by Israeli forces, not by American forces. Before I let you go, I, I wanted to ask you about—we've seen photos and video of President Biden speaking to the families of American hostages in Gaza. I mean, I've been in the room for emotional conversations he has. You've been in the room for many. Just on a personal level, what, what was that like, um, being in the room for that? It, it, it was hard to—it um, was hard to, to sit and listen to— uh, people who are enduring the most unimaginable pain, the pain of not knowing where their loved one is, what is happening to them. And it was 
just an absolutely gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching experience, one that it's actually been difficult for me to tell other people about. And President Biden, uh, you know, he spent more than an hour and a half on the call with those families, listening to them, comforting them, uh, sharing his own stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, it was one of the most remarkable displays I've seen of his leadership, his compassion at a moment of just absolute torture for these families. And it drove home for me that this isn't about policy or strategy. This is about people and um, and this conflict, uh, this brutal terrorist attack we saw. Uh, it ultimately comes down to the people that it is, you know, whose lives it has shattered. And we are going to do everything we can to ensure this kind of thing cannot happen again. Jake Sullivan, thank you for your service. Thank you for your heart as you work on all of these challenging issues. And thanks for being with us this afternoon.